put. Let's see. Okay. And I believe we're live. All right. Thank you for joining us on another episode of our the, the Airsoft GI live show. Uh, I've got myself, Bob the Axman, here, and and Bill. And today is going to be his last live stream. It is. You want to tell the viewers why? Uh, just moving on to different opportunities. That's right. But Bill, it has been a pleasure having you here, and I'm excited on your last live show. Uh, we have a rocket launcher. We have a rocket launcher. Now, we got to play with this thing. Yeah, we, <laughs> we certainly did. But you've actually used uh, a rocket launcher just like this in some of our games before, yeah, right? Yeah, I used it at, um, was it, Bro uh, no, I almost said Broken Home. Not Broken Home. It was one of our games. It was uh, Salt on Antioch. Uh, was it Salt on Antioch and BB Wars Episode 2? I think... BB Wars, I may have used it once, yeah. but Antioch, there was like that one game where it was just, I put down my gun, they handed me the rocket launcher, I just uh, walked around with this thing and a pistol. It's pretty fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, it definitely was. Once I figured out how to aim the thing, and just like, I mean, it's just kind of satisfying the way it works, because you've got this button, so you just, let me try and get the slide. I think the baby powder may have gotten a little stuck. <laughs> yeah, we loaded this thing with baby powder. Oh, my God. It really is stuck. Keep it together. <laughs> Well, we don't have to open it, but anyway, it essentially it cracks open from the top. Okay, I give up. <laughs> Maybe there's a safety. No, nope. okay, I give up. Anyway, this thing you press a button, it slides open, and then like it, it just cracks open like that. And it's kind of satisfying when you have it and you do that, open it, and you just throw a rocket in there, shut it, and then thunk. Yeah. And it actually, because it is using CO2 at a pretty high pressure, mm -hmm. it actually does you get have a little, a little bit of a kickback on it. Yeah. And this one. We were using it, it was actually using the entire CO2 cartridge. In each shot. In, in each shot when we did the filming with this, but normally it gets like two to three shots per CO2. I think I was getting about two on the one I used, but mm -hmm. because if you tried to use it on the third one, it'd be a little like two. Yeah, I've never actually had the chance to use a rocket launcher, but it always seems like a lot of fun. Um, I'm pretty much all our BB Wars games, I'm out there commanding, and thankfully, you know, you had the opportunity to rock, walk around and be, uh, you know, the head of yeah, the weapons team. It, so. it, it was a lot of fun, definitely. I mean, because it was literally pistol in my left hand, this thing carrying over my shoulder on the right shoulder. It was very satisfying. Very satisfying. <laughs> very satisfying. All right, well, uh, before we go into uh, too much more detail, because we've got some cool guns here we want to talk about, some new customs in from the tech department, I want to get you guys up to speed on what we have going on right now. We had a mystery patch package drop today, and I think uh, over half of them are already gone. Yeah, uh, well, that was like an hour ago, I think, when we checked, so yeah. they might be even closer to just being all gone. So essentially, if you guys aren't aware of the mystery patch package that we do, it's five bucks, you're going to get uh, a random patch, or you're going to have a chance at winning uh, multiple different gift cards, essentially shopping sprees that are soft GI all the way up to a thousand dollars and I think there's a a scar or a couple VFC scars in there as well yeah I, it's a I think it's just I think it's a standard um, scar heavy in there okay nice um, which you know as a lot of you I'm sure know VFC is a company that makes great guns both externally and internally so yeah, if you guys are uh, that's the scar. Oh, that no, is the scar. Heavy. This yeah. is the one I think that's in there. Now, uh, if you guys are making an order on airsoftgi.com, you might as well throw in a mystery patch package. It's five bucks. I mean, I wouldn't want to say it's a gamble on what which patch you get, but uh, but you know, it is a chance to get a lot more than you're putting in as far as money goes. You oh. know, I think it's like what 50, 75, 100, 250. Five hundred and thousand dollar gift card. Yeah. yeah. So we, we had a chances. we had a fella that we saw in the orders that he ordered was it forty. You ordered 40 patch packages. Mm. Actually, I got an interesting question from Man Myth Icon. Maybe Bill will answer since no one else at GI ever does. Bill, blondes or brunettes? Brunettes. Mm -mm. Uh, I assume that's girls. Yes. I mean, you know, it's a little questionable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that being said, um, why don't we bring on some of the custom guns? Because, again, our tech department does amazing work. Why don't you grab that one right there? This one is, you got the spec sheet. This is the, uh, is it the Avenger? That's the LVOA base gun, right? Yeah, I think this yes, one is this the... this is the <gasps> Ambush. Ambush, sorry, the, wrong The Avenger wrong is not on here at all. Yeah, Where's I, the Avenger? I didn't, I just thought... You made a, that up, didn't I you? Made... <laughs> yeah, you, you totally made it up. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is the Airsoft GI Custom uh, Ambush. Uh, the base gun for this is a Crytek License Warsport LVOAS. Uh, shoots between 390 and 400. I'm going to try and go through all the features pretty quickly here. Um, parts used includes a NC Star 3x magnifier with flip to the side quick, uh, or excuse me, QR mount, a UTG 6-inch ITA red-green CQB, 
Um, I assume that's, yeah, that's that. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, you got to see this optic. The It's actually super cool. Oh, really? Yeah, it's. I've never seen one on an airsoft optic. Oh, you you finished fin- 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 reading that off. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a weird, like, t-shirt. Oh, that's it's cool. It's really cool, right? Where neat. were we at? We were at the UTG. Yeah, just finished UTG, that. UTG, uh, primary, primary Arms DNC FSC 556 Flash Hider. That's hidden down in there. We have, it's uh, S-Hopped with that's a Swiss Arms cool. 6.01 barrel. Nice. Uh, Pro Win Hop-Up. Um, that's a CNC one, Maple Leaf RTX concave hop up nut. I've used those, those are awesome. Bravo Airsoft full size scout flashlight, which Bob was just playing with. That's a train. Uh, Night Evolution dual function tape switch, which is on top. Yep. Tinley GT40000 motor, MFT Industries Engage pistol grip and flat dark earth. That's actually really comfortable. Yeah, that, and one. that is incredibly comfortable, actually. Uh, Magpul ACS dash. L stock, which I actually have that. I had that stock on my uh, LM4. It's an awesome stock. I like that. I, one. I really like it, it's especially the compartment for Skittles. Yeah, that's nice. And then it's got a uh, comes with a PVC uh, 24 inch gun bag. Actually, the most useful thing was because the one I had on my LM4, I went with the mil spec model. I mean, that doesn't really matter. But because it was an LM4, you know the hop up key. Mm-hmm. How it's weird. I actually kept it attached to oh, to a, a rope, a paracord that was bright red, mm-hmm. and I kept it in there so I could always find it if I needed to do an adjustment. That is actually very smart. I don't want to give you too much credit, so well played. Yeah, the magnifier is really kind of fun to play with. Yeah, no, that's neat. Especially um, since I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 4 lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill's been talking about that since uh, he got in the office. Yeah, it was out. it was five dollars on Xbox, like the Xbox Live Store. Dude, I got it for one ninety eight. Where'd you get that at? Or, oh no, I'm thinking of the Steam Store. I did get it for it was like just under five dollars, like four. Well, because something. like the thing is, because EA and every other company is doing that thing where it comes with like the online pass. If mm-hmm. you buy it used, there's no point. So it's like oh, five dollars downloaded my hard drive. Okay, and it was like hardline was that, but I was like, I don't want to reskin Battlefield 4. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I've been wrecking house with the Scar H and an EOTech and an angle foregrip with the muzzle brake. I'm just like, bam, 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 just popping people. You know, it, the, the Scar H in Battlefield 4 works shockingly well. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was using the M39, which is the EBR, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try the Scar H, and it's the SSR variant or whatever. They have a different designation for it. And the recoil is much less, so like with, for the mid-range engagements that I'm doing, I can just go bang, 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 bang. Even the super long range, just put the dot on the sniper glint that they have in the mm-hmm. game and just pull the trigger three times and takes him. <laughs> Done. Um, so uh, Pete, oh shoot, I lost the name here real quick. Pete Newman was asking, what weapon light is that? Can you check that out? Yeah, it was the Bravo Airsoft Full Size Scout Tactical Flashlight. Yeah. Uh, the airsoft guy can't was saying they thought it was night evolution. I actually thought that as well, but uh, I guess not. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. Or someone mistyped us. One of the two. Oh, well, it should say on the actual light. Oh, that is. Yep, it's night evolution. So someone screwed up the spec sheet. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you guys have any questions, whether it's about these customs, about Bill's face and hair, uh, or general well-being, by all means, throw them in the comments section. We'll try and get to them uh, as we can. And. We have another custom to show off to you. This and one is, you got the sheet over there. Yes, this is the Airsoft GI Custom Sky Striker. And this is based off of a... LM4. LM4. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so as you mentioned, the base gun is the LM4 PTR. Um, it shoots between 360 and 380. Uh, parts used include the Mad Bull SWS license 12.658 inch Riz, uh, the Mad Bull Airsoft Land Tag Dragon Flash Hider, the Echo Front and Rear Combat Sight Set, the Lancer Tactical Mini Red and Green Dot Sight, which is actually pretty darn nice because it comes it, with a riser. It really, it really is. I mean, overall, it's a great little sight. I think I used one of these on... It was a much shorter gun I used at mm-hmm. uh, BB Wars Episode 2. Mm-hmm. And it was actually perfect because I've never used one where it's just a dot. And it's just like, oh, bang, 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 bang. Like, very easy to aim. Well, it's, for me at least, it's nice that it comes with a sight riser because it allows you to use, you know, Your masks. Your masky, masky McMaskerton. That's right. Um, in addition to all that, it comes with the Magpul USA MOE fixed stock, Magpul USA MOE grip, uh, Echo One SPR gas block, NC Star 36 inch gun bag, and a PTS Fortis Shift short angle grip these are actually my favorite i want to put that on a real ar it's really comfortable because it's got like the pinky slot it does i actually like the the slightly bigger ones that we can put most oh the one where you can almost yeah yeah i mean it feels like just another like pistol grip almost up front so but yeah and the longer one you can do the exact same thing because it's got Mm -hmm. the same cutout and then it goes down but i just like the look of this one all right so let's see i think those are the only two customs we have right now and i believe they are up on the website as we speak 
All right. Yeah, so if you guys want these or want something like it, make sure to check them out on our website. Um, and if you guys uh, have a specific budget in mind and want to build your own custom gun, hit our customer service line uh, up. You can actually uh, find the number for that at the top of our website, airsoftgi.com. Uh, Ugh, Bob. Um, now, if you want to get that custom gun within a specific budget and a specific build, talk to them. They have a direct line to the tech department. They can work with you to get that build made. Um, now, in addition to our patch package that went live today, we do have a Boneyard mystery box going on this weekend. So if you've ever wanted to get uh, get some new parts to try a new tech build or even just get into teching in general, this is actually a really good way to do it uh, because we throw random pieces from the Boneyard in there. Um, and it's crazy how like some of the stuff from the Boneyard is still functional with just a few slight issues. Yeah, I years ago before I worked here, I had an AUG A3 that I picked up at the Boneyard sale. And all that was wrong with it was a wire had become desoldered. And I just soldered it back in and the gun worked mm -hmm. fine. Oh, actually, someone was uh, mentioning that they uh, they like the paracord wraps on the LV. Oh, yeah, wrist. that was very well done. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who did that in the department, but whoever they did, bravo. Indeed, indeed, Tex. Uh, now, you actually do that on uh, some of your uh, AEGs as well, yes, right? Yes, I did. Um, the I actually gave you my old oh, rail sitting by my on desk, the desk that yeah. has a paracord weave job on it. Uh, my LM4, I did it on the stock as well on, because I actually had, I actually had this stock on there. I threw some paracord like through here and through here just for looks. And then also when I had the LE stock, I wrapped some paracord. Just kind of throw a little dip, little more color in there and give it a little bit more personality. Uh, HD Fireworks is saying they don't allow, to, allow me to talk to the techs for the custom gun build. Uh, a lot of the reason for that is probably because they have a lot of work on their plate. So generally our customer service and sales staff can actually go through the process of work with you to get that build as opposed to taking them right off of a build because we do have a lot of customers that come in uh, to get specific builds done. So if we take them away from that, they have less time to do the gun builds. And they are very good at their work, um, but you know, pretty much everyone here plays their soft and especially our sales floor and customer service staff uh, have a lot of knowledge and are able to get through that, uh, get through that build and get it sent to the techs. Uh, Bob, do you recommend the LVOAS? I recently had a time, uh, had a chance to take it out uh, to an airsoft game. It was our most recent BB Wars game at GamePod Combat Zone, and I got to tell you, I mean, completely unbiased, <clears throat> I had so much fun with this gun out of the box. Like I literally had no modifications to it. Um, I think I just had. Um, Externally, there was just like a different stock on there and an angled foregrip. Yeah, it was the UBR stock. Correct. Um, trigger response is exceptional. The accuracy is great. The range is awesome. And that's literally without any upgrades whatsoever. Um, I definitely shot Jonathan Higgs, who's the opposing commander, quite a few times. Because mm -hmm. he had that armor on and it takes a couple extra hits to yeah. put him down. So I would literally have to lay into it, which, yeah, so be it. Uh, but yeah, I, I absolutely love this gun. I think it's awesome. Uh, if you're going, if you know, if you're going to be playing CQB, maybe not the best gun because it's a long gun. Uh, however, Crytac is going to be coming out with uh, shorter variant. Is it the LVOA C? Uh, uh, S is or the, the S. Yeah, excuse me. We already have it. It uh, comes in black, and I think they're going to have the other colors coming out soon. Um, and then we've got this one, which is Airsoft GI exclusive in Flat Dark Earth, which I actually really like. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can only get the Flat Dark Earth very here at Airsoft GI that is exclusive to us. So check that out on our website. And let's see, I'm new to Airsoft. Any starter suggestions? Bill? Go out to have fun. <coughs> very good point. <coughs> uh, for me, as far as getting into Airsoft... Uh, I would definitely suggest finding a local field and renting a gun uh, to start with, or at least uh, buying a beginner tier airsoft gun uh, so that you don't, like, I guess, spend all your money up front and get a gun that down the road you might wish you've gotten something a bit different. Um, I have seen folks that, like, will go out and buy, like, a custom for their first gun and they don't really know how to use it to its, uh, to the, to the potential. maximum. Yeah, full potential. Thank you. I was, I was uh, worried about that one. Um, so I think it's really good to, like, uh, start out slow and figure out what you know what your play style would indicate the gun that you want or the setup that you need. Uh, so, for example, you know, go out and rent a gun at the local field, or you know, get a Lance Tactical, a Combat Machine, a G4, uh, something in the kind of beginner to mid tier, uh, and go go out and play for a few months or a few weeks and see you know see where you want to upgrade to, or how you want to upgrade the internals on the gun, or if you want to step to a mid tier or a high tier gun. Well, like, here's a good question, Bob. Your play style? Would you say you're more of like a CQB or like a mid-range or like like what is your preferred style of play? It's interesting. I mean, I really like CQB just for the the high intensity action you get. Um, 
I mean, overall, if I can only pick one, I really like outdoor play. Uh, but my, mm-hmm. you know, some of my favorite fields have a mix of both. Like Balahack has a lot of outdoors, and they've got some amazing city uh, or urban terrain as well as fire bases. Um, so I, I like having a mix. Um, but in all honesty, like if I could, like if I was playing regularly, I'd probably be playing CQB because it's easy and mm-hmm. you can get out there and get a lot of time shooting. Whereas you know, outdoors a lot of time, you know, there's basically moving around a lot, setting mm-hmm. up. Uh, but yeah, I, I prefer outdoors. Um, let's see, Kara Simmons, my price range is like $100. Well, we have the deal for you. Every now and again, we have deals in airsoft guns that we call blitzes. Now, if you can take advantage uh, of those blitzes, generally you can find a gun uh, under or around $100. Uh, however, other suggestions I would make are uh, the Elite Force KMP Basic mm-hmm. or the Elite Force RSKP, essentially a full metal M4 or a full metal AK from Elite Force. In addition, there are Lancer Tacticals out there, both AKs and M4s. Uh, if you increase the price a little bit, you can get a G&G combat machine. Uh, there are definitely a lot of good options to get into Airsoft um, with, you know, $100. Um, I would also suggest, you know, if, if and when you get that, um, either rent a good set of eye protection when you get to the field or save up some money and get, get a good set of eye protection because the last thing you want to do is, you know, get shot somewhere where you can't replace things like your eyeball. Or your teeth. Or your teeth. <laughs> I have been shot there before and I hated every second of it. Um, do, 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 do. What is a good pistol you prefer? That's from Baseball Freak. My personal favorite pistol I have ever used was the Elite Force M1911A1, which is the bare bones, no rail, no mm-hmm. fancy sights. 1911 CO2 powered, so I mean, you could go through multiple magazines before you needed to change it out, and it was field legal. I played outdoors, I never played inside, and I also think though now. The FPS on the Elite Forces may have gone down to CQB limits. I'd have to check on that. That'll be interesting. Um, for me, I really like the KWA 1911 uh, Mark series. It's essentially the KWA 1911. There's just a couple different variations of it. Uh, I also like the KWA HK 45 and the Elite Force 1911 TAC. Ooh, actually thinking one that I would really like, I haven't gotten to test it yet, though, is the uh, KWA ATP Auto, the new one. That'd be fun. That does look <laughs> like a lot of fun. Although, I, I want to get the C version, the compact. Oh, yeah, that yeah. one's cool. That thing looks cool. Um, do, 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 do. I don't even know what that means. Uh, yeah, I think I know which one you're looking at. Uh, that one? Yep. Yeah, that's weird. Um, okay. Uh, someone was asking, why is this Bill's last live show, Bob? Well, I'll let Bill tell, him, tell you himself. I am just moving on to other opportunities. Boom! All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully uh, we'll be able to see you out airsofting uh, sometime in Southern California yeah, in the future. Yeah, I, I mean, I will try. If you guys hit me and be like, hey, we're going to play, I'll be like, you just go. Just, uh, Grab, grab a gun from the marketing department. I'll meet you well, out there. We, uh, <laughs> we, me and some buddies, uh, including some folks here like Josh, would uh, uh, head out to Tax City for their pistol shotgun night and once in a blue moon. It's pretty fun. Just, like, just bring a Springer shotgun. I'll use that. that dude, that's I, I either use a Spring shotgun or I use my Tokamari gas shotgun pretty yeah. much every time. One of the two I'll use. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, Bob, top bullpup pick. Ooh, that's Ooh, an interesting question, Airsoft Titan. Question. That's an interesting question. Um, I mean, if P90 Girl was here, I'd just be nice to say a P90. But honestly, if I had a choice, I really like the Tavor. Damn it, that's the one I was going to Tough. Um, I like the real firearm version, and I really like the Airsoft version. I mean, the weight is you know more or less in the back of the gun, so it's really easy to operate one-handed, which is important. Mostly just for me because, you know, I can use the Tavor and I can use the axe at the same time. Um, but I also like the look of the gun. It looks really futuristic. Uh, I like Israeli weapon designs, and they did a really good one, a really good job with that one. Um, uh, what's your pick, Bill? That was going to be mine, but I'm, trying oh, to, you, you I'm just trying to think. I already said I'm it. trying to think of other bull pops. We've got the L85. We've got the AUG. We've got the AUG. <laughs> I think that's there's, really there's about P, it. P ninety. I I can't do P nineties. They're too small for me. Like it's. I, I That'd be fun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Um. I'm gonna go then with the AUG. Oh. Oh, you said AUG. I thought you picked the same thing I did. Um. Yeah, AUGs are pretty cool. I've actually seen a resurgence of Australian I mean, kids using. On the those. real one, I like the the dual stage trigger is mm-hmm. pretty cool. Hmm. Um. Airsoft, I mean, they're they're kind of like picky just because. It deals with electricity. It's a little bit more difficult. But if you're doing with a fire mechanism, it's a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, what do you think of WeTech? I'll start with you, Bill. 
Okay, then I'll answer mine. <laughs> no, um, that, that was my answer, was my oh, look. Okay, well, they didn't see all of that. So. Uh, no, I looked at the camera, and uh, I looked at you, and looked at the camera. I haven't had good luck with their pistols. Yeah. I'm personally a very big skeptic when it comes to WeTech, just for a similar reason to Bill, is that, you know, I... I personally really hate when magazines aren't very efficient or you run out of gas before the entire magazine is done, which well, is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I just was redundantly, I redundantly said that. You were um, redundantly redundant? Yeah. Well said. Um, so that being said, uh, I mean, I haven't had a lot of great experiences with them and I've shot a lot of different guns. I mean, I obviously have not shot even close to the whole product line, but most just the Wii guns I've you know, had a chance to use just can't get through the whole mag or have issues. Now, that's not to say that a lot of people do not have fun with Wii, Wii Tech pistols. I, I have a lot of friends that use them. Uh, a lot of my friends that use their gas blowback rifles, however, absolutely swear by them, but that's after they put like $200 worth of aftermarket work into them. So, you know, if, if they love it and it makes them happy playing with it, you know, good on them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pee in your cereal, uh, but if it was me and I'd spend my money, I wouldn't be buying a Wii Tech, uh, and that's just based on personal experience. Um, I actually did buy a pistol for a friend of mine a years ago for some editing work he did for me and I just bought it because it looked cool. I didn't really care how it performed and I found out literally yesterday that it was a Wii Tech. <laughs> but then, I funny. bought it like three or four years ago. Um, he only used it a few times. Someone asked if I like Glocks. I do like Glocks. I mean, I ran a G18C from Stark Arms for a number of years and I actually, in, for real life, I would like a G17 because they're pretty much like a Glocks are like the AR-15s of the pistols. There are so many things you can do to them. Mm -hmm. Like triggers, slides, barrels, firing pin, like everything. Well, I feel like you can do that to a lot of other pistols in the market. But, well. I mean, like, there's a lot more aftermarket support in yeah. terms of, like, I mean, you've got ZevTech, you've got, um, what's the what, what's the one that does the gold stuff uh, that hasn't had a website for a suit? Salient Arms. Like, there's so many different brands that do aftermarket like fancy looking stuff for them yeah see if you can see in the comments there are there are some folks that really do like their Wii Tech pistols and that's the thing oh another thing i should mention is that they are actually very affordable so it mm -hmm. hits that market segment where you know if you want a budget sidearm you know it's it's an option and uh, that's the thing is that i have very bad luck with uh, everything in general so you know it's possible that a lot of the guns were just you know bad models uh, and there are a lot of folks obviously that have fun with their guns uh, but honestly I mean, I really like guns that are great out of the box and that have a longevity associated with their purchase. That's why, like, when I buy Katie Way pistols, like, they just keep working and working and working. The only real issue I've ever had with the Katie Way pistol was the Gen 1 ATP. Uh, there was just basically one part that needed to be, I can't remember if he flipped it around, or basically just needed to be adjusted, and the gun performed great. Um, so that's why I use Katie Way pistols. They work really well for long periods of time. They're great out of the box. Uh, but it's not to say you can't have fun with Wii Tech pistols. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. My dream G17 HC Arms Ur Urban Combat Slide RMR and Enforced Pistol Light. Uh, that Boy Scout, I'm going to totally uh, agree with you on a lot of that stuff. I actually have always wanted to have a pistol with an RMR, uh, and I really like the Enforced Pistol Sight. I think it looks really cool. That's the uh, little red dot you throw on them, right? The RMR. Uh, is that what that is? What's that? The RMR is the little red dot. Right? Yes, that is correct. Um, Shout out for NY Airsoft, please. NY Airsoft, your shout out is approved. I've always wanted a Glock with the cutout on the top and the ported barrel. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought that'd be so freaking cool. That would be badass. <laughs> uh, well, uh, just to go over a few things that we haven't or we barely alluded to earlier, we actually have some new VFC scars on our website. Here, Bill, why don't you grab this guy? Mm -hmm. I just waited until you started drinking water. Right, I was drinking it. water. Yeah. Uh, that's the Scar Heavy. We also have the Scar SSR, and these come in uh, two different color variations tan and black. We also have a normal Scar L, which is actually uh, just a Bill's left right there. Excuse me. <sighs> now, we got a smoking good deal on these, and we're passing savings on to you. Um, now, I can't remember the exact pricing on this gun, but I believe it was north of $400 and is now like... I think it was right five. 500 It was 500 bucks oh originally. Um, and I think now it's like 329 I do know mm -hmm. that these scars are $269. Uh, that's, I believe, $120 off from what mm -hmm. they used to be. Um, VFC, like I mentioned before in the last show, they make great guns both on the outside and on the inside. So we got a stupid good deal. And if you've ever wanted a high quality scar or even just a high quality AEG from VFC, definitely check these out. I, I do not believe you'll find a lower price on VFC scars anywhere in the world than from us right now. 
Um, also, if you're looking for a DMR build, this is a very unique and cool looking one. Um, we're actually talking about uh, doing a custom version of one of these for DMR build in the market. Very department. similar to the sniper rifle we have up there. Yeah, that, that has worked <laughs> out phenomenally well, and I think this would actually be pretty cool to take out. This is actually way lighter than you would expect. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty it's awesome. It's because the upper is all CNC aluminum, I think. That's right. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are all interested in this, um, I would highly suggest checking them out. Um, I, I own a VFC SCAR, uh, one of the guys that formerly worked here, Mark. Uh, he had one, and he did a lot of tech work on it to get the rate of fire up to, what was it, 44 rounds a second? Some, some, it, was, it was over 40. And that's not using a dual-sector gear build. That's yeah, I just, don't know how he did that. I don't know either. Mark was... Mark would just like to, you know, push Take things that. to the to the edge of their uh, edge of their mechanical ability. So, so anyway, check these guys out. Uh, we have them until while supplies last. So if you guys want that or want to add your inventory, something very unique, fun, and high quality, I would highly suggest them doing that uh, while the price is right. Do you want to set this one over there? Nope. Okay. I'm just kidding. Well, it's funny is like I'm normally a Stanag magazine style kind of guy, but if I picked up a scar, I kind of would pick up that scar heavy that I was just holding. Hmm. Top SMG picks, Bob. That's actually a very good question, Airsoft Titan. Uh, for me personally, I absolutely love the KWA KMP9. I also own a KWA KMP7, and I own a version 1 classic Army MP5. I really should stop getting the version 1 of things because it really just bites mm -hmm. me in the butt. That The version 1 MP5 from classic Army is so heavy, so hard to take apart, and malfunctioned a lot to where they were actually notorious for that. Um, but I just say that because I love MP5s, and I was actually checking out the Elite Force MP5 in the walk-in store about two hours ago. Mm -hmm. Kind of wanted to get it. So, uh, But my top pick would be the KMP9, uh, and then my next suggestion would be uh, the MP7. Oh, what about you? A Scorpion Evo. That's, uh, <laughs> gosh, why didn't I think of that? That's why I didn't say anything. Uh, I was waiting for you to be like, is he going to say it? Yeah, the Scorpion Evo it? by Action Sport Games, otherwise known as ASG. God, thing's ridiculous. Is a, yeah, like, both Bill and I are mystified by how a gun in such a compact package can have such absurd and obscene range. And accuracy, too. And, like, yeah. For the like range and like the barrel and all that stuff, like how accurate that little gun is. Yeah, I take it back. If I if if I could only pick one, it would be the Scorpion Evo. That gun is so awesome, and I'm so happy they finally came out with the high capacity mags. Oh. Yeah, so awesome. Uh, it is. I mean, just so everyone knows, it is by far not the most affordable AEG out there. In fact, yeah, no, it's a it's little bit pricey. Pretty expensive. But you see where your money goes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I mean. God, Lord, that hop up. I don't know what they did to make it so consistent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the compression on that gun is exceptional uh, in addition to the hop up. Um, <clears throat> okay. Can you run through the live stream, Josh? Well, hopefully, Josh does. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Josh, what happened to Tax City South? Uh, I hope. Uh, I, do you mean North? Yeah, I was going to say Tax City South is still working. Yeah, yeah North closed. Uh, north closed. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. How many guns do you have? Good question. Uh, while I count, Bill? Um, are we going real or airsoft? I'm going to assume airsoft. Okay, well, airsoft at zero. Well, yeah. How many airsoft ones You, you sold them recently. I sold yeah. them, but I used the ones here. In terms of real... I mean, I personally wouldn't tell people how many real guns I have. That's yeah, I don't know. I think I have around 20 airsoft guns. Jesus About half those. Oh, wait, hold on. 22. Around 22. Are you kidding me? Well, I got about like nine pistols. About. Where the hell do you keep them? In a cubby hole. It's a big cubby hole. Well, here's the thing is I bought uh, a gaggle of pistols way back in the day. Uh, when I was I was shooting just some you know fun videos, uh, this, I guess before YouTube came out, but uh, I was just trying to do some fun videos and like kind of I guess try my hand at filmmaking uh, on my own before I was all the way through college. Um, and there was a deal on pistols, so mm. you know I picked I picked like four or five up at, at one time. Um, but you know other ones I picked up working here uh, using the employee discount. God bless America. And uh, yeah, so I just expanded my inventory over time. And I've also been playing for, gosh, well, like, you've been playing a long time. Yeah, almost twenty years now. So. Let's see. Bob, can I get a shout out? Yes, Terry Roberts, your shout out is approved. All right. Um, let's see. 
Uh, I'm new to airsoft, but not to guns. What's I uh, was wondering what your thoughts were on the Elite Force M4 for a first gun. Um, that's from Hishinator. I actually think it's a cool name. Um, now, it depends on which Elite Force M4 you mentioned. I assume you mean the Elite Force KMP Basic, which we currently have on special for, was it 90 bucks? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's a full metal Elite Force M4. Um, in all honesty, I think it's a great deal. Um, most guns are, I think the only other uh, deal available right now is the Lancer Tackle M4 around mm -hmm. $90. It's a polymer exterior, a full metal gearbox, however. Um, so yeah, I, I think those are very good guns. I think that's a really good place to start airsofting. I think, you know, after six months to a year, um, you're probably going to want to upgrade to a mid-tier gun or upgrade the internals on that Elite Force KMP Basic. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a, a great uh, great option to get into airsoft or at least just get out onto the field. So totally, I would highly suggest that. Your, your thoughts? What did you say? Well played. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, here comes the shout-out train. Choo-choo, that is correct. Uh, should I use green gas or propane? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. Bill, I believe you've covered this before, right? Yeah, I mean, I've used both, and to be honest, like, propane, technically, yes, it's cheaper because, you know, you just get at whatever store, Target, Walmart. You do have to make sure to but, lubricate your yeah, guns I was when getting you use that. propane. You, you have to add silicone to it, and the thing is you can add too much, you can add too little, it's kind of a pain. And then some companies have used propane, one of them being KWA. If you use propane, it voids the warranty. And I, I used to use propane, and then I just kind of gave up because I got tired of having to always, you know, add the silicone, worrying about the warranty, and all of that stuff. I was like, screw it, I'll just use green gas. And overall, it's a lot easier. It keeps your gun running much better. Um, and also, you don't deal with the smell. Good point. Uh, I just heard that last part. I was tuning you out for the rest. Uh, I'm trying to read the comments. Oh, yeah. Um, do, 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 uh, Josh, the AK man. Bob, will you answer my question? I don't. I didn't see your earlier question. I was just trying to scroll up and find it. Uh, if not, will you give me a shout-out? Yes, Josh, the AK man. Your shout-out is approved. Uh, someone was asking um, uh, which LMG would we want. Hmm. Do you have an idea of what one you'd want? I absolutely do. I would, I would really want, for a long time, I wanted... Uh, an M249, and then I wanted a stoner LMG, but now I want a Crytek LMG Enhanced. Mm, Those things mm -hmm. look awesome. They perform really well right out of the box. And did I say, they look awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's what I want. Is there anyone that makes an M240 Bravo? Yeah. Who makes it? I think it's Echo 1. Is it Echo 1? Mm -hmm. M240 Bravo. Nice. Uh, that is a beast. It is pretty big. Yeah, I know. I like it because it's basically, hey, we took the M16 or M60 and we made it modern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Train. Train. That's a really loud one. Although the M60 is pretty cool if you want to get your uh, animal mother from uh, Full Metal Jacket on. Nice animal mother. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Looking for questions to answer. Um, Bob, what is your opinion on the G&G F2000? Um, I think it's... Uh, the gun performs really well. Uh, the the manager of our storefront, Vince Kim, had one for a long time. I don't know if he still has it, uh, but he would rock and roll with that gun. Uh, also, Very ergonomic. Yeah. Uh, yes. I personally don't like... I think it's too big for my... Well, yeah, person. it's a very, like... Elephant gun? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it, it looks like an elephant's foot, actually, like the profile. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're kind of cool. I'd want to try and figure out how to make it the F2000 from Splinter Cell. Well, I know the grenade uh, launcher and all that stuff. I know uh, uh, Level Cap uh, from Level Cap Gaming actually got a G&G FN2000, and he got a rail kit on there too, and he was rock and roll with that. But I just remember seeing Vince from our storefront, like literally just wasting fools left and right with it. Like he was just deadly with it. So if that gun can be put to good use, so by that measure, it's a darn good. Yeah, gun. I had a buddy that he won one out of a mystery box years ago before I worked here, and that was his favorite favorite gun. Nice. That's that's a good win from mystery box. Uh, what should I put on my battle belt and what's on yours? Very ah, good question. That is a good question. Well, let me start because I, I run a battle belt. Go to town. Um, what's funny is I actually don't, the only thing mounted to my battle belt is my dump pouch. The reason I have a battle belt is for the my belt that holds my holster mm -hmm. and my leg rigs, the weight, because I used to run just a thick belt and that would dig into my side, so I threw in a battle belt so I had extra padding so the weight wouldn't, you know, cut into my size and everything, and that's what I always did. Uh, for a while I had that um, training knife mounted to the back of it, remember in the BB Wars video, 
when I'm slowly gripping the knife that was mm -hmm. mounted to my battle belt. I think that's, that was uh, actually a pretty good placement on that. Like, yeah, well, awesome. I mean, like, that's where I just had it, like, overall. And I was like, huh, put that. And then I moved it to my leg rig, so it was a lot easier to access when mm -hmm. I was in full kit. Um, I haven't used a battle belt for a couple months, uh, but what I have, what I did have on mine was uh, my G-Code holster attached to it. Um, I had a dump pouch. I had a couple taco pouches. Um, what I wanted to add to it was some of the banger holsters, the Kydex banger mm, holsters, mm -hmm. uh, just so I could have easy, easy and quick access to grenades. Um, but yeah, I don't, I didn't really have a whole lot more. I mean, sometimes I'd use a battle belt in conjunction with a Costa leg rig and in essentially an HSGI leg rig just to carry the maximum amount of ammo. But yeah, generally just a couple pistol mags and maybe like, um, you know, an, an M4 mag or two in case I'm using an M4 and a sidearm. The, the problem I found is like, because well, we have we have the same plate carrier, mm -hmm. is that that one is a larger plate carrier. And then you've seen how I, I have my stuff loaded out. Sometimes it's difficult to like reach, like if I put anything on my back or anything like that. And then because I'm a person who likes when I shoot to be lean, mm -hmm. I can't ever mount magazines on the side of that. Otherwise it's going to be like, and into your side. Yeah, well, me, uh, myself personally, I don't use battle belts with a play carrier. I generally just use the play carrier or the battle belt. Um, and if I have a play carrier, yeah, I'll throw on like a holster on the side. But I like just keeping everything contained on that play carrier. That's the other reason why I have it on a drop like holster and not on the battle belt is because I have a play carrier. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, should I get a taco pouch? That's from Jack Burns. Uh, I would highly suggest them. Another option are the G-Code Scorpion pouches. Mm -hmm. I have one of those as well. They work phenomenally. Um, I, l I love the tacos. I got two of them on my plate carrier and then two on my leg. <laughs> yeah, I just I really like the idea of, you know, a, a pouch that is adjustable for multiple different sizes of mags. Because I remember... Well, you can even throw a grenade in there. Yeah, well... That's, like, you can fit pretty much anything in there. Yeah, it. well, yeah, mostly you can fit a lot of different stuff. And I, I just remember back in the day um, when I was buying pouches for uh, a chest rig or even some of my plate carriers it's like you have to get like so many different sizes of pouches and that gets expensive really mm -hmm. quick so just getting you know one or two taco pouches is a really great benefit and what's nice is like the ones I have is it's got the pistol one on top of the, the M4 or well whatever magazine you want to run in it and then it's the pistol mags if you don't run pistol mags them it's perfect for like putting a knife or like a multi-tool or something like that and they don't go anywhere hmm um, yeah, I've put multi-tools in there. i put flashlights. I've actually put Big League Chew in, in that delicious yeah. bubble gum. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else have I put in there? I haven't seen anyone actually put tacos in there. Um, well, they, they did when they advertised it. No, we did at one point when we started carrying them. Someone got Jack in the Box tacos at the walk-in store and put a picture on oh, Instagram. I thought that was photoshopped. Put, oh, no, okay. we actually put tacos in there. Um, I've seen folks put Monster Energy drinks in them. Mm. What's the uh, if you're running around bouncing, it's going to really shake it up. Well, it was Aaron Zidich. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, what the craziest thing you put in a taco pouch. <laughs> uh, I've seen Snicker bars, but that was a hot day and that was not a smart idea. Mm. Um, well, I'm sure there's plenty of things that you can say that are yeah, not appropriate right. for um, the interwebs. Do you th this is actually a question we dealt with on our last live stream. Uh, do you think riot shields are fair? Um, in my opinion, it, it uh, depends on the rule set uh, that governs the game where they're being used. Um, you know, riot shield is no rules. No, I do not think that is fair at all because, you know, a lot of folks will come out with a transparent riot shield and be holding, you know, an assault rifle, you know, an M4, an AK or, or whatever. Um, and it's their nigh on and vulnerable. So I think for me, if, you know, we were to do a BB Wars game and allow riot shields for pretty much everybody, uh, they would have to, the riot shield would have to be semi accurately weighted. Essentially, it'd have to be heavy. Mm -hmm. You could only use a pistol, if anything, with it. Um, and then there'd be specific rules like, you know, rocket hits would, would kill you, uh, grenade hits would kill you. Uh, but you have to really, really regulate that. Otherwise, it gets super unfair and frustrating for the opposing team. Because uh, I've been on the other end of that where I remember at one of the BB Wars games, um, there were four different uh, kids and adults that were just absolutely begging to use a riot shield. Like, they would not let up. And, and um, like, three out of the four were, like, legit, custom, awesome-looking riot shields. And I, I eventually relented. And I, I just don't know why I didn't realize they're all on the Imperial team. Ah. So, man, I felt I felt really bad for my Rebel Troopers after that one because we took quite a shellacking. After yeah, that. my thought is it needs to be a heavy one. Those, if it's a clear one, it can't. If it gets shot, you're out. Yeah, because that's that's more for like physical attacks, yeah. not so much bullets. If it's one of those like big old heavy steel looking ones that have just like holes for you to see through, then okay, that one can take some BB hits. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Uh, we're actually getting to the tail end of the live oh, stream. Yeah, oh, it, wow. it went by really oh, fast. Really um, now, actually, I, I wish I'd mentioned this earlier in the broadcast because we're going to be doing something special tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah, hopefully. That's right. Uh, and for those of you that have stayed around so far, how many of uh, I can't tell how many people are here. Um, for those of you that uh, have been stayed around, have stayed around this long, uh, we're doing a special live stream tomorrow. I don't know the exact time. Probably my guess is around like four o'clock. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like that, a little bit later, or like maybe three yeah. or something. I don't know. Uh, Josh has been nice enough to offer to bring in his HTC Vive. Essentially, uh, it's a virtual reality system, and uh, I've had the chance to play with it before. It's mouthwatering. It's amazing. It's stunning how much fun. It's just awe inspiring, like the new sets of VR are these days. Like, I, I literally drooled the first time I used one. Uh, like, I was mystified. I can't I use never enough used one. verbs and adjectives and whatnot. But um, he's going to bring it in. We're going to try and live stream uh, a game of Onward, which is a new game for virtual reality. Um, it's essentially, you know, a first person shooter. Um, we actually saw some video of someone using. Uh, scar and a saying that looked like Afghanistan and the person was like, you know, let's say you want to take cover You know, you have to get down low if you want to go prone You actually have to go prone if you want to look behind the sights. You got to bring the gun up I mean, there's there's all these cool uh, Features that from looking at people playing it it like they're doing physical activities and it looks like really awesome It just hmm. I don't know like it's like I mean this is, it's totally going to fall into the chair softers thing, but it's like going to a Milsom event without leaving your house. But, mm. uh, um, yeah, it's just pretty cool. I mean, obviously, it's in the early development phases, and I'm sure, Josh, when I come back out, there's a bit, Bob, you didn't explain it right, and I I don't know. I'm just really excited. I'm happy Josh is bringing it in, and I'm very happy for John, our IT guy, who hasn't seen the vibe yet. Uh, dude, I've never even seen it. I don't even know how this stuff works. Well, you're going to have one heck of a fun time. So it is absolutely amazing. So make sure to stay tuned to our social media tomorrow. Um, we're planning on streaming that on YouTube as far as I know. Um, and I'm very excited for that. Yes, Jag Precision, you are spamming my name. What's up? <laughs> I, I assume that's Tech Brian. Uh, hi, Jag Precision. <laughs> You might get put in a timeout. Um, <laughs> all right. Please give a shout out for not seeing me. That's my question. Brayden in a cone. Uh, please forgive me if I miss. Uh, Iana Cone. Please forgive me if I mispronounce your last name. Your shout out is approved. Oh, I get to do a Raptor Airsoft. Your shout out is approved. Properly done. Well done, Bill. Um, do, 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 do. Um, Let's see, is the VFC Mark 18's internals, are they good? Uh, well, generally, uh, well, as a general rule, VFC does ex excellent work on their external and does phenomenal work uh, on their internals. So um, you definitely get what you pay for as far as their soft guns, and that is no mistake. Um, okay, a lot of Bob, a lot of creepies. I'm not saying that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right, well, Bill, um, oh, this is, actually, it's funny. Uh, Charger 626. Uh, is asking me for my thoughts on Novrich, and it's funny. I was out uh, getting my lunch earlier, and I ran into uh, a no, Rich? no, I did not run into <laughs> Novrich. I would have Instagram the hell out of that right away. Um, I ran into a player who'd actually just bought uh, 1911 at a store earlier in the week mm -hmm. or mid last week, and we were talking about different things, and we actually got on the topic of Novrich. And Novrich, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, I met him and got to hang out with him for a fair amount of time when he was uh, here in the states. He's a really good guy, um, and he also, you know, when you see him sniping on the videos, he really is that good. Uh, he's also been sniping for, I think, uh, just under 10 years. He was in the Austrian uh, military I was for... Say he was in the military, wasn't he? He was in the Austrian military for, I can't remember if it's two to three years, and did train as a sniper. Um, he didn't deploy, uh, but uh, I think, I can't remember in Austria if... If there's a conscription or if it's an all volunteer system, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's if they're on the Israel thing where it's like when you hit an age. It's conscription, yeah. yeah. Um, however, you know he he did learn uh, the tick uh, the tips tools and well trades. Well, I screwed that up. Uh, basically, he was trained to be an actual sniper. So you know a lot of his knowledge comes from an actual professional background, which definitely hmm. forms his decisions a lot better. Uh, but yeah. He is a genuinely good guy. Uh, he is a genuinely good airsofter and a sniper, and I just really hope he comes back to U.S. again. It'd be really nice to see him again. He's really fun to play with, airsoft with. Yeah, there you go. I was waiting for you to go there. Um, well, Bill, uh, do you have any parting words for all of us, even though you're still going to come out and play and say hi? Yes. Um, I mean, it's been a great experience again. It was mm -hmm. nice seeing everyone again. I got to see some new faces come in. Um, but overall, I'm grateful that, you know, I was able to come back mm -hmm. and work for as long as I did and I'll stop by and visit when I can. God bless America. So.
All right. Well, to all of you out there who joined us for Bill's last live show, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Bob the Axeman Hildebrand, and this is... Bantha Bill for the last time on the GI live show. Ba -ba -ba -ba. All right. We'll see you guys. Well, I won't see you guys next time. We'll see you guys <laughs> next time. <laughs> oh, buddy. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I have to look to the right to